I'm twice divorced and I've almost ruined the greatest relationship I've ever had, not once, but twice. I don't speak to my daughter or know my grandchildren. And I've been on a ton of shitty dates. So I know about pain and I know what it's like to have heartbreak in my life. But Jay, he told me I could solve all of this with a simple game of tennis. So let's find out what the heck he's talking about. So in my past, I was an ambitious entrepreneur and my ex-husband loved to study his Xbox. So can two people who are completely incompatible have a loving and lasting relationship? Great question. And to start us off, I'm going to remind you of our previous episode about the checkboxes, the hidden relationship checkboxes. Do you remember those? Yes, I do. Okay. For anyone who missed that episode, basically every human being has hidden checkboxes. And the more that those checkboxes are met by a partner, the closer their relationship will be. So if I have a liberal politics box, that might be one of my high up boxes or my priority boxes. And the more that the people I'm around check that box and match that, the closer I'm going to be to them. Then my second box might be kinky sex. And so the more that someone is okay with that, is okay with kinky sex, the more likely I am to be close to that person. On the flip side, if one of my priority checkboxes is liberalism and I'm trying to relate with someone right wing or conservative, the chances of us being close are much slimmer. And then if they also don't check the fetish checkboxes that I have, then we're also not going to get along even more and so on and so forth. It keeps going, right? If we have totally different diets and I want to be a vegan and they want to be a carnivore, again, you're starting to get more and more chance of the relationship falling apart. A relationship can only handle so many checkbox mismatches. And this goes for a boss and an employee. They both have their hidden checkboxes. It goes for a parent and a child. It goes for a husband and a wife or two friends or whatever. So for two people to be compatible, it's all about being able to read these hidden checkboxes and then adjust our trajectory towards them. So this is what I'm adding on to the last episode. The last episode covered these checkboxes in detail, but now we're talking about trajectory. And so each checkbox is like a target or a goal, and they can move as people grow and change. But the point is, there's these hidden targets hanging over everybody's head in every relationship. And if you change your trajectory to go towards that person's checkbox, then you're becoming closer to them. You're aligning with them. You're harmonizing with them. And if you go off in a different direction and you're like, no, screw your checkbox. I'm the opposite of that. Like yeah. you, you love religion. I'm atheist. If you lean hard in a different direction, then you'll get further from that person on that topic. And then we can move to the next topic and analyze that. And it's going to be the same, right? You're either getting closer to that person's checkbox and your trajectory is aimed towards them, or you're getting further from that checkbox and for the next checkbox and the next checkbox and the next checkbox. And you can either do this quickly or you can take your sweet time about it. If I know that you want to switch to a vegan lifestyle, I can either quickly adjust to that checkbox and move in that direction with you mm -hmm. at, a, at a fast pace, or I can try to stall you and drag it out. I can be like, oh yeah, I support you. Sure, be a vegan. I'll, I'll start buying different groceries and I'll eat different things. Meanwhile, I'm not, and I'm trying to sneak snacks behind your back and stuff. It's like, I'm not really supporting it. And every everyone can feel this in a relationship. Everyone can tell if you're supporting their dreams at a fast pace or not. I can say that I want X, Y, Z, and someone can deliver that to me instantly, or they can take their sweet time, like stalling and resisting, and I will feel it, right? Yes. You will feel it. Yes. When you said you wanted to change your diet, did I adjust to that checkbox at a fast pace or a slow pace or an average pace? <clears throat> it was super fast. And so I just want to interject something real quick about you and my life here for a moment that in another relationship I was a vegan for two years and it caused nothing but arguments and fights because they didn't want to change they didn't want to eat and I was fine like with that but it was like the nasty way of saying it to me when I wasn't even bringing it up or asking you I'm like I need to change my diet I'm not feeling well I'm having some issues 
and you're like, oh, let's go to the butcher. Let's go right now. They're going to close in a little while. Let's go get you bone broth. Oh, it's it's nine dollars a thing. Let's buy 500 of them. Like the difference is incredible. And I don't it's not really a comparison between between my relationship. It's just to show the difference how somebody who supports you and loves you in a relationship that the response be you don't have to change you could say the same things let's go to the butcher and buy the bone broth and get the things you want i'm gonna eat the way i want to but i want you to have your things but no no you go above and beyond that and you're like i'll eat whatever and i'll so, join you in your yeah, diet Yeah, you'll join me in the diet yeah. and and, Happy and, to. and and even though like, i don't need it right and so loving and kind and it's such a beautiful it's so it's so beautiful and this is the levels of pace and direction in a relationship because before it was the complete opposite i hate you and the diet and like you're vegan and you're stupid and blah 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 which I never lectured or tried to force anyone. I just stated my own feelings. Perfect. That is two examples that demonstrate the principle perfectly. Mm -hmm. You have a hidden checkbox of diet or diet support. Yes. And you have one ex who veers hard away from it Mm -hmm. and doesn't support it. And then you will feel distant and you will feel discord with this person. And then you have uh, another partner who fully supports it, jumps on board immediately and joins you in the diet, making room in the budget, making time in the schedule, making adjustments to their own nutrition just to support you. Yeah. This is a perfect example of trajectory B going rapidly towards your checkbox Mm -hmm. and trajectory A veering far away from it. Yeah. Which is hilarious why anytime he tries to blame me for it all. (laughs) <laughs> I could say, hey, no, look. Well, no, I mean, not you, that you, I would talk about that anymore. No, but you bring up another good point because to in his mind, his hidden checkbox is dietary freedom. Yeah. Or his hidden checkbox is zero nagging or his hidden checkbox is convenient grocery trips, right? Mm-hmm. There's something that's a priority for him. It's a hidden checkbox. Yeah. But he wants it and he cares about it and he's annoyed if if he doesn't get it. And so you're free to make your dietary choices and I'm I'm glad you do. I encourage your health of any kind. Mm-hmm. But there is a cost. It's it's going to separate you guys on one of these checkboxes. And you could say, well, he didn't meet my checkbox. But he could also say she didn't meet my checkbox. Yeah. So if we want a relationship with someone else, whoever wants the relationship is responsible for moving the trajectory towards the checkbox, right? Mm -hmm. They're responsible for the pace and direction because the other person just wants their checkbox. They don't care about the relationship. Like what's more important? This is the question everyone is asking in their mind every single time with every single choice and every single interaction. What's more important? The thing that I want in my heart or my relationship? Because Mm -hmm. a lot of times you can't have both. Mm -hmm. Like you can't have this relationship with this person and still be a right wing radical you know or you can't have this relationship with this person and still be a carnivore like that's how it goes for some people those are deal breakers they're very important check boxes and so whoever wants the relationship to work out most is now responsible or in charge of making some adjustments or navigating or dealing with these check boxes or talking it out or somehow changing the other person's check box but i mean that gets into the whole you can change a person thing and so really, in your first example, you wanted your dietary checkbox was, so much and you wanted the relationship so much mm-hmm. and he wanted his dietary checkbox or his convenient grocery trip checkbox so much and he wanted the relationship so much and whichever one of these wins out is going to determine how it goes. If someone wants their checkbox more than the relationship, they're just going to like leave. And if someone wants the relationship more than their checkbox, they're going to adjust their trajectory and like, okay, well... I got to meet this person. Mm -hmm. I've had something that I've I've been a deal breaker for me on all relationships, not just with you, with anyone. I know. And if someone refuses to meet that, we will separate every time. I'm on a mission. I have a goal. I'm ambitious and nothing is taking me away from this or taking me off this. So anyone's welcome to join and support that dream and and meet that checkbox and I'll happily relate with them. And anyone's welcome to go against that checkbox or disrespect that checkbox and I'll gladly separate from them. Yes. And that's all there is to it. Everyone has their deal breakers and every human has their checkboxes. And in a relationship, whoever wants the relationship more than the checkbox needs to make adjustments. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So to use my example, I believe he wanted dietary freedom 
though I never said he couldn't have it, it was he assumed. Well, it might have been the nagging. He might he, he doesn't want to hear about it. Like he wants peace on the diet topic, right? Everyone's checkbox is like kind of nuanced. Some people want dietary freedom. Some people don't care what the diet is, but they don't want to hear about it all the time. Some people want restaurant mm-hmm. choice. Some people want smooth grocery trips where I'm not picking and choosing. Yeah. So, so I don't know exactly his checkbox, but you might. So regardless of what either of us wanted, it makes a lot of sense. I was willing to deal with it for two years. And then I met you and I came here and like, it's interesting because when I came to visit you, you had all these vegan restaurants lined up and you were ready to like take me out and and show me all the vegan stuff. And you were happy to eat vegan for two weeks while I was with you. And then I got here and I was like, you know what? I'm in Canada away from the kids. I'm just going to eat meat. (laughs) And, and I've not been a vegan since. So, but thank you so much for accepting me and like I never pushed my stuff on you ever or asked you ever like to change your diet. No, I volunteered. I know. And so that's a really loving thing. I volunteered because I can read all your check boxes and I'm happy to meet pretty much all of them, like 99% of them or something. Yeah. And to me, that is an incredible partner. If you can find a partner who is willing to cooperate and adjust their trajectory towards all of your check boxes, that's bliss. You, you've got an amazing partner. So I, I do my best to be that. But even if somebody doesn't go that far, can you see how understanding the hidden check boxes and understanding the trajectory or the pace and direction that we are meeting our partner's check boxes mm-hmm. or, or failing to can make relationships so simple. Like you can tell when someone's going to separate. If you show me two people and I just listen to them talk for a little while or I read their social posts, I'm going to start to tell like what's important to them, what their check boxes are. And I can tell if their partner is on pace and on direction to harmonizing with those or veering far away from them and vice versa. Right? Right. Relationships right. become simple. So, so just to be clear that I understand. So in my opening words, I talked about that I was an ambitious entrepreneur and he is a gamer who had no interest in monetizing his, his passion. So if I'm okay with him being a gamer and I'm an entrepreneur and, and I don't put any pressure on him to, to do anything, let him do his thing. That's how we can remain compatible. And if the relationship becomes more important to me than him helping me or being as ambitious as I am. Yes, exactly. Okay. If you wanted that relationship to continue, you would have to understand your checkbox, ambitious entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. You'd have to understand his checkbox, weed and gaming, and you would have to make sure that both of those checkboxes were met and supported. If you care about the relationship, if you are like, I want this relationship to work, I care about this, I'm willing to invest in it. And especially because you're smart enough and have learned about the checkboxes and pace and direction, it's kind of your responsibility to sort this out. And you can, it makes it easy. Now I know what to do. Don't harass this man about his weed and gaming, make sure he can do it. I guess I should be an entrepreneur and make enough to support him or whatever. Like Mm -hmm. it's not everyone's favorite thing, but it would keep the relationship going. Okay. Or you're like, this is a deal breaker. If he's not going to be ambitious, I can't meet that checkbox. He can't meet this checkbox. We should just separate. And that's fine too. But it still makes the relationship easy because now you know, I'm. this is what I'm dealing with. This is their checkbox. This is a deal breaker. And obviously we shouldn't be together. It's not a good fit. Like a liberal and a conservative are usually not a good fit or an atheist and a Christian, usually not a good fit. And especially if you have a lot of checkboxes that aren't matching, yeah. then you're screwed. Right. Right. So it's very easy to navigate. I have no problem knowing who to dump and when or who to stay with and when because I can read the hidden checkboxes. I can tell the trajectory and the pace and direction and I can tell if someone's willing to change or not. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Thank you. So that might have sounded a little cold at the end like to somebody. I just want to point out that we've been together for five years and I've made a lot of mistakes and I haven't changed. I mean, I have changed, but I changed a lot of things slowly uh, that I that could have been changed faster. So even though you say that, you also... I was the most patient. You were also patient and loving and the relationship mattered in those moments more than, than some of that stuff. I've thrown away a million so, checkboxes and preferences just to keep the relationship going. I know, so... I just want to point that, put that out there. <laughs> anyway, no, I appreciate uh, it. I love you very much. Okay, so we're going to move on then. So we've had a lot of arguments 
<laughs> well, we've had a lot about arguments about the word argument because I like to call them discussions because the level of argument between us is nothing like I've experienced with others in the past. And I say the level is irrelevant unless it's on one side or the other of neutral. Right. So does this relate to the trajectory thing or, or the pace and direction thing we were just talking about in the last question? Fantastic question. And it absolutely does. Because when you have two people and they're going the same pace and direction on a topic, there's no argument. There's no fight. There's no debate. There's no discussion. They're on the same pace and direction. They're in harmony. They're parallel. And they're going the same way. Person A wanted to get up early, crush the day, help the world, make a lot of money, and then have some time at night for playtime or whatever. Person B got up early, wanted to help the world, crush the day, and then have some playtime at night or whatever. These two people on this checkbox will have the exact same pace, direction, and trajectory, and they're not going to fight about that. But if person A wants to sleep in and lay around and smoke weed all morning, and person B is like full of energy, loves their passion, is super excited to get to their business, and they sleep in the same bed, or they share breakfast tables, or they do breakfast dishes, you're going to start getting discord. Mm -hmm. You're going to get disharmony. Yes. You're going to get separation and tension and arguments and fights. So this happens constantly in relationships. And it, it blows my mind because people act surprised. Mm -hmm. They're like, I can't believe she doesn't want to get up early. Or I can't believe all he does is work all day or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you clearly have different check boxes. You're on a different pace and direction on this topic. And if you let it keep going, it's going to get worse and worse. And then you'll see some people try to force themselves. Well, I'll force myself to wake up early. And it's like, okay, fine, you're closer now for a bit. And if you can turn that into a habit and you can actually like own it, then you might stay on the same pace and direction as your partner. But if you're just forcing yourself to do it temporarily, you're just going to bounce back even worse. Yes. Or if this person's like, well, I'll just chill out on my ambition and I won't focus on work so much. And I'll, if she wants to sleep the day away, I'll sleep it away. Like, okay, fine. If you can actually own that, if you can actually change, maybe you can stay together and keep the pace and direction tight. But if you can't, you're just going to veer back to like, I need to work. And then you're going to take a vacation from her so you can go work forever. And then <laughs> and then it, it gets even worse and yeah. worse. I mean, can I offer a, a third thing? Sure. Like using us as an example, because I used to love to sleep late. And even though I'm an ambitious person, I enjoyed starting later in the day. You like to start super early in the day and get going. And, and that's how you are. But we kind of had a with an unspoken compromise of we're going to get up early, we're going to spend time together lounging around for 30 minutes in the morning together. And then we get on with our day. Like, and so that's another way to stay on the same pace and direction. Yes. Or, or my, my misunderstanding. Did I call that wrong? No, you got it right. There are plenty of creative solutions to maintain a healthy pace and direction with your partner on various topics. Mm -hmm. People act like there isn't. Oh, I could never change. And there's no solution. And I guess we just have to agree to disagree or whatever. <laughs> but it's like, be a creative human. If you care about the relationship, put an iota of effort into it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You changed your diet. Mm -hmm. I could, oh, well, I guess that's how it's going to be. I guess I'm just going to have a crappy diet forever and she's going to do her thing. And <laughs> I have to devote all my money towards her crazy health food budget and whatever. Like, Or I could figure out a solution. Well, maybe I could learn to like what she likes. Maybe I could try some of it. Maybe there are foods we can both eat. Maybe someone on Reddit has solved this already. Maybe I should look into this. Maybe I could do a little research. Oh, wow. Creative solution. Who would have thought, right? Like, yeah. So it's a good point. Yeah. So I make sure to schedule that extra time in the morning, no matter what time I have to be somewhere. Even if it's at 5.45 in the morning, I then we wake up a little bit earlier to have for- The our, lounge time. Yeah. To have our, our alone lounge time in the right. morning. Anyway, can you see how every choice we make on every little topic of our lives is either creating more harmony with our partner or more discord with our partner? Yes. Okay. And discord is what I call an argument. Like it will result in an argument mm -hmm. sooner or later. First, it results in tension and stewing, and then it results in an outburst, and then it results in snipping and sniping at each other, and then it results in an argument. Like the, the more the discord grows, the longer it grows, the pace and direction on topic X 
the more frequent and more intense the discord and arguments become. Yeah, and and this isn't just like romantic relationships. This is everybody in every relationship. Yeah, employee wants to show up late or come in whenever they want. Boss wants them early every day and overtime every day. Those are two totally different checkboxes, two totally different wants, and it's going to create discord more and more and more until the employee leaves or the boss fires them or whatever. There's going to be fights and arguments. It's how it always goes. This stuff is not rocket science. Relationships are way simpler than people make them out to be. Some hidden checkboxes, some pace and direction, it creates harmony or discord, and you're going to get your arguments, right? Or you're going to get relationship bliss. So I'm going to relate this to tennis before we get to the end of the show. (laughs) But can you see already how these first two tips, the checkbox and trajectory and the harmony and discord allow you to navigate relationships effortlessly and to avoid any kind of hurt? Yes, I can. And if you notice the discord and the disharmony and and how you're going in two different, different pace and direction, then it shouldn't be a surprise to you if you're paying attention. You either realize it and get it together and figure out a way, like how important is this relationship to me? Am I willing to give this thing up? Like if you said, you know, I, I'm, I support your diet. I love what you're doing. Here's all the money and the budgets for you, like whatever you want, but I'm going to eat junk food. I would have to, then I would have to decide, is this a deal breaker for me? Is this, do I need somebody on the same exact diet as I am? Do I, do we have to be the exact same or can eat whatever he wants? And I have to be strong enough to stick, stick to my own decision and eat healthy the way I want to eat. Like, so we're constantly evaluating this, I think without even realizing it sometimes. Yeah. Everyone's always asking, is this relationship worth it? Yeah. All the time. Yeah. I, yeah. Every, every relationship. They never admit it out loud, but mm. it's going on in everybody's head Agreed. all the time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I, I do it with my kids. If, is my son bugging and being a pain in the butt that I'm not answering his text or, or his phone call right now? I need a break or I need a moment or maybe we, we need a couple days break or whatever. Or same with you. Like when we were having issues and do I want to go talk to him about this or do I, is the relationship not matter? Oh, I'm going to break up with him. Like, you know, what matters. So it's it's a constant thing with, with everyone. So this is really good. Thank you so much. And I think if we help people be conscious about this, then there'll be less arguments in relationships. There'd be none. Right? There'd be like tiny little debates or civil discussions because yeah. everyone would understand, oh, a checkbox isn't being met. Mm-hmm. I've clearly veered off in pace and direction or they've clearly veered off in pace and direction. Our only option is to get it back on track or to admit we're not meant to be together on this. Yeah. And that's okay too to see, again, we use us as an example. You want to go eat junk food. Well, I want to be healthier with my partner. I want my health partner to be as healthy as I am and eating the same healthy thing. So we would go this way. And then I would have to evaluate, like, is this worth it? Do I want to spend my life with somebody who's going to eat junk food all the time and and won't eat healthy with me? Like, Or I could change. Yeah. I could change my diet and meet your checkbox. And now the discord goes away and the fights disappear. Yeah. Like it seems, I think we cured divorce. Yeah. It's super easy. (laughs) It's barely an inconvenience. (laughs) Oh my God. Shout out to Pitch Meeting. (laughs) If you know, you know. Okay, that's great. So that was wonderful. I really appreciate that. I feel like we've already solved the divorce and and argument issue all over the world with just this. We have three more to go through. So thank you. This is really, really good. So Rise Rebels, how do you feel about this? Do you, What do you think about pace and direction and discord or arguments, whichever word you choose to use? Do you see how this can save you and your relationships, any type of relationship from disharmony or splitting up or see how you can be compatible even though you have different interests? I'd love to know your thoughts and your feelings on this. Please leave it in the comments so we can help each other. And those quiet little lurkers who don't speak or ask questions, we want to help all of you. Okay, so moving on then. So when we broke up, I started making massive changes after like two or three days of self-loathing and depression. I started making positive changes for myself, not to get you back, but for my for me to make me happy. But those changes I made actually brought you back. So am I like magical? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. And in a way, yeah. Anything that is impressive is often written off as magic. 
what we call science today, medieval people would have called magic. (laughs) And what I'm teaching here about relationships, most people will call magic when they try it. If you try it, it feels like magic. Right. But it's really not. It's simple physics. It's relationship physics. It's super simple. Mm -hmm. So have you ever heard the phrase, don't try to change a man? Yes. And does a lot of relationship pain and discord come from a woman trying to change a man? Mm, Yes. Yeah. If you've ever seen a woman try to change a man, it's painful to watch. It's like, honey, you're never going to change this man. What are you trying to do? Like, Well, this is why we get into a lot of trouble, ladies, because we see a man's potential and we think, oh, we can change him. Or he'll say, I don't want a relationship. And we think, oh, we're the magical, the magical girl to change him. And it's very, 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 very rare that we ever are. Right. And that's a much deeper topic because you can invest in someone and witness their change, Mm -hmm. but it's very different from being able to consciously change someone else. We cover that in our dating investment episode. But by and large, the general rule of thumb here is you're in for a lot of pain if you try to change someone. Yes. And it's not just girls changing guys. Guys changing girls can be a nightmare as well. Mm -hmm. But why is this, right? How does this relate to people's checkboxes. If I give you a guy and a girl and they have checkbox A, checkbox B, checkbox C, D, E, F, some of them are more important, some are less. Mm -hmm. And there's some mismatch or some discord or some disharmony on these checkboxes. What is easier to change? Your partner's checkboxes, like get them to stop liking that diet or get them to stop gaming or get them to stop smoking or whatever, or to change your checkboxes. Change your checkboxes. Yeah. Far easier. Yes. Trying to change their checkboxes? Nightmare. Mm -hmm. Hell on earth. I swear to God, you are asking for a relationship war zone if you try that. Agreed. Yes. But changing your own checkboxes? You're not going to get any fight. No one's going to stop you. You're free to change them as you like. You have massive power and control over your own checkboxes. And so in your example about bringing me back, it was the first time in a long time, maybe ever, that you stopped trying to change my checkboxes. Mm -hmm. You stopped trying to make me a different man. I told you who I was from the beginning and I was clear about it up front all the way along. You did. I've done this with other girlfriends and I tell them what I'm interested in and what I'm about and they delude themselves into thinking like something else. Like, and I'm like, you're asking for trouble. What are the chances you're going to change me or I'm magically going to change overnight? That's nothing. It's never going to happen. Right. But if they just change their own checkboxes to meet, Mm -hmm. to match, If you really want a relationship with me, change your checkboxes. Yeah. Because like, I'm not out there looking for a relationship. It's not my priority. I'm focused on my mission, on my vision, on what I'm trying to create in the world and the the kind of man I'm trying to be. I'm working on my stuff. If someone wants a relationship with me, they can see me for who I am and then match, match that. They say, if you want a great man, you should be a match to a great man. If you want a great woman, you should be a match to a great woman. Yeah. So this is why changing ourselves can bring someone back or bring us closer to someone because there's all of these checkbox matches, these like threads between them that are creating harmony or discord. And if you don't match a whole bunch of your partner's checkboxes, it's like discord, discord, discord. But if you start changing them, like, okay, I will work out and I will get hotter and I will be more agreeable and I will be nicer and kinder. And now you're matching all the checkboxes and you're getting closer and closer. It's just how it has to go. You're more of a match to this human being now. Yeah. Or yeah. if you want to date a stoner who plays games all the time, be a match to that. If you don't like smoking weed and playing games all the time and you want a relationship with this person, don't try to change their weed and their gaming. Mm-hmm. Just start liking weed and gaming and you're going to get closer to this person. Yeah. If you want to get closer to a coked out drug addict, you should use. Yeah. I'm true. not recommending it, but I'm no, trying no. to demonstrate yeah. relationship principles. Of course. This is how it works. Of course. You have a lot of power to change your own check boxes. Mm-hmm. And you can adjust your pace and direction closer to theirs. And if you do, you will get closer to them. It's guaranteed. There's a relationship physics, right? Yeah. So in my past relationship, when he put effort into my business and when he would help me and I was working on eBay. So I had a lot of like errands to do, take this to the post office, weigh this, like whenever he would help with these little tiny things, it made me feel closer to him. I know the feeling. And with you, when you started being chill in the morning and didn't just jump out of bed and and we kind of had that like unspoken thing of just lounging around for 30 minutes 
points in the morning. This made me feel closer to you because these were important checkboxes to me. Yeah, I adjusted myself yes. and it changed my checkbox and it made me automatically closer to you. Yeah. Guaranteed yeah. relationship physics. Okay. Well, this makes so much sense. Like, I love it. And it feels magical when you do it. It does. If I want to be a match to some celebrity, I need to get on their level. Like I need to know about PR and I need to understand their headline seeking and their attention seeking. And I need to know about their job and their career. And like, I can't just be like at home playing World of Warcraft and like, oh, I want a celebrity girlfriend. It's like, you don't match any of the boxes, dude. Yeah. Like yeah. if you want to be closer to her, you need to be in her circles, be like the most famous face, the most popular face on her Instagram, be seen around her. If she likes Instagram, you like Instagram. Like if she eats vegan, try vegan. And say, I'm learning it. I'm trying it. What do you recommend? As soon as you start matching her checkboxes, you will instantly get closer. And if you do a great job and you really adjust your pace and direction and you do it fast, you will be closer to that celebrity than anyone fast. Yeah. Really? And this, this doesn't mean to, to be fake. No. And it has to be sincere change. It has to be sincere change. It has to be sincere change. I want to change for me. Not to manipulate them or to get close to them. The getting close to them will be a side effect. Yeah, because you changed for you. Yeah. And the side effect was that I came closer or I came back. Yeah. But I you had didn't no, change for me. No. You had no idea if I was coming back or not. And it didn't even look like I would. No, I and it wasn't even like, oh, a thought in my head, I'll do this, so he'll do never. Yeah, if, if you had was, that thought, it wouldn't work. Right. It was I was sitting here, miserable, nothing to do because the podcast, as far as I knew, it was over and we weren't doing anything. I had no other job. I was doing nothing. I was sitting here and I was like, what? am I going to do? So you just changed a few check boxes, got closer on pace and direction to me and my life and where I was going and what I was aiming for. And it brought us closer. Yeah. But just the other day we had a discussion or an argument or whatever you call it, <laughs> where we weren't seeing life the same way at all. And you were getting further from my checkbox and I can feel it. And I'm like, well, whatever, if this keeps up, I'll, we're, we're going to separate again. Mm-hmm. And you wanted reassurance. And I'm like, you don't need reassurance. You can see the check boxes. Yeah. You know, if you're separating or not. Yeah. And that doesn't also mean like, oh, one thing, one checkbox is off. So forget it. We're just not even going to check. No, it could be one, two, N- ten. No, it, it's not that. It's different it's, for every checkbox. It's the which checkbox it is because you have some that are important and those are like non-negotiable. Like I will never date a non-ambitious man ever again. Right. I will never be with somebody who isn't after the same thing. So if I someone want. screws up that one checkbox, you're gone. Right. Right. That's a deal breaker. But if box. it's like, you know, I want someone who likes to camp with me. That's like way down here. Eh, he's not camped before. He may or may not like it. Eh, whatever. If he doesn't like it, I'll camp by myself. Like it's so low down on the list. I don't really, yeah. it doesn't matter. You'll adjust that checkbox yeah. or you'll be okay if the checkbox is unmet. Right. Yeah, yes. Whatever. Yes. Okay. But can you see how this can seem like magic because you can magnetize anyone to you without changing them. You don't have to fight with them. You don't have to argue with them. You don't have to have a big long chat with them or a hard conversation. You can literally just see their checkboxes, adjust your own pace and direction, make your trajectory go towards them and you will get closer to them bit by bit. And it won't happen instantly overnight. This isn't some kind of magic instant pill. It's just physics. It's like going from here to the outskirts of town. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes energy, but it's very simple. And yeah. same if you want to get closer to any specific person. It takes time, it takes energy, it takes effort, but it's very simple. Yeah. And can you see how just like going to the outskirts of town, this doesn't have to involve getting hurt in any way? Yeah, it, definitely. I didn't realize, I thought it was a magical thing. Like, oh my God, but you just broke it down for me and, and it makes it way easier to understand. Even though it feels magical, it's so simple. Yeah, so, you like, can practice it. If you wanted to get closer to your oldest daughter, mm-hmm. what would the process be? What would you have to do? <laughs> I would have to ask for forgiveness for something I didn't do. Because that's one of her main checkboxes? Her main checkboxes, I don't want to apologize and I don't like confrontation. Fine. So she has two main check boxes, no apologies and no confrontations. Yes. So I'm not saying you should, but no, no, if you wanted to get closer to this person and have a relationship, mm-hmm. if you met those two check boxes and you brought your pace and direction mm-hmm. towards them, what would happen? Oh, we would talk again. Yeah. You would have a relationship yeah. instantly. I'm not saying you should. No. Because not all relationships are meant to happen. You're no. not meant to relate to everyone all the time and so on. Right. But when we do have a relationship that is important to us and valuable to us and it feels right to us, we absolutely can control how close we get to this person just by following these tricks. 
the checkboxes, the trajectory, and changing ourselves. Yeah. And just for the record, when I'm wrong, I'm happy to admit I'm wrong. I've done it on the podcast a million times. I've admitted I'm wrong. And when I'm wrong, I'll apologize and say I'm sorry and I'm wrong. I know. But I'm not wrong and I'm not sorry. That's okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. This was really, really good. So, Rise Rebels, if you loved that, you'll love this. Look, it arrived. (laughs) Eyes Wide Open, Volume 1. We officially have it here with us. Took a while. It took a while, but it is wonderful Mm. and beautiful and shiny. And I'm so, so proud. I love you. You did an amazing job. This is so beautiful. We are giving away the free PDF of the world's first self-help coffee table book called Eyes Wide Open Volume 1. All the artwork in it is done by Jay, my, except two photos, which we had permission to use. And all the amazing juiciness, amazing wonderfulness that you get on the podcast is in this book and more. But we don't really make money off of the book because I'm a baby brat who wanted shiny, beautiful paper. You can see the gorgeous paper, the shine on it because I love paper. So we have a free PDF of the book. The link to download it is in the description. All you have to do is enter your email address and you can get your hands on the free version. And then if you really, really love it and you want to support us, you can buy the actual book. It's so pretty, isn't it? Thank you so much. I love you guys. I didn't know what boundaries were and I had no boundaries when we met, but you taught me the value of boundaries. So can you please explain why boundaries matter in all relationships? Awesome. That's a good one. And we could probably do a whole episode on it, but I'll start with an analogy. Can you relate a drop of water to the ocean? Yes. Okay. Why? Because they're both water. Okay. So they have a similarity. Yes. Okay. Do they have any differences? Well, yeah. One is huge. Like ocean is ginormous. Right. And a drop of water is teeny tiny. Right. So you can relate them because they're individual separate things with similarities and differences. Oh, yeah. Yes. If we plunge that drop of water into the ocean and it's the boundaries of the drop dissolve and it merges with the ocean, Mm -hmm. can you then relate the two? Can you tell me the similarities and differences and all that stuff? No, because now it's become one. Yep. We have no boundaries. Exactly. There's nothing to relate. It's just one thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So to have a relationship, what do you need? Boundaries. Yeah, you need two individual things, each with their own boundaries. The ocean has its boundary and the drop has its boundary. Yes. As soon as you break or dissolve or merge or blend those boundaries, what happens to the relationship? Cool. The relationship, there's no definition or no boundaries and you can't tell where one person starts and one person ends. There is no relationship. Okay, or that. (laughs) You you just said. Yeah, there really isn't if you... Like the drop ceases to become a drop and it just becomes part of the whole. So it's the same thing. Yep. So if a really strong narcissist dissolves all the boundaries of a low self-esteem people pleaser, Mm -hmm. what happens? He absorbs her. Yeah. She's not her own person. No, she's not. Healthy? No. Good? No. A relationship? No. It's not even a relationship. It's a mockery of a relationship. It's a joke of a relationship. You could slap the word relationship on it, but just like the drop in the ocean, it ain't there. Yeah. Yeah. You could look at the ocean and be like, see that drop? I love that drop. And I love that drop's relationship with the ocean. It's like, honey, what are you looking at? I only see an ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So can you tell me why boundaries are so valuable and important in a relationship? Well, to have a relationship, there has to be two or more people who have boundaries so that you can tell who's who and you can see where the relationship is and where they start and end. Yeah. Again, it doesn't have to be romantic. This can be a mother and child. So for a long time, I expected my children not to have boundaries with me and tell me everything. And and actually, it kind of felt like what you're just saying. I felt like I was kind of absorbing them. And now that my children are adults, basically, my middle daughter has set boundaries with me m- multiple times. And at first, it stung a little. But now I understand why they were important as well. And it's weird because I didn't understand until this moment. So 
<laughs> Thank you. And I remember this before we met. I would get mad that she would speak up and say something. But it makes sense because she didn't want just to be an extension of her mother. She is her own individual person. Well, not only that, do you want her to be an extension no. of her mother? Or do you want your kids to be their own individual people? I want people? them to be their own individual people. So what must you encourage them to have? Boundaries. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So important, so yes. underrated, so overlooked, so essential to a good relationship. And if you damage or weaken or dissolve the boundaries of somebody, what are you damaging and weakening really? The relationship. Yeah. yeah. So, so many Hold women. <laughs> I just had my brain explode, y'all. <laughs> Seriously, because I never thought of this and and this would make really a lot of sense of why I have no relationship with one child because I stated boundaries and she refused to respect them respect them and the other one did the same thing with me and I was refusing to respect them until she uh, wouldn't allow it she was like nope this is my boundary and you will not cross it we didn't speak for a little while but when I realized that's what she was doing I backed off and I respect her boundaries and so did that strengthen the relationship yes yes it really did. Well, I know you're like, yeah, okay. But I did not realize that until just now. Like I'm having one of those, another one of those wonderful aha moments I get on camera. And I'm so, I love it. I love when you do this to me. It's the best. Okay. So then that means that the boundaries work to strengthen all relationships. Yep. And this is why we really need to encourage people to have boundaries more than because for me, before this conversation, I thought it was we should have boundaries so that we feel independent and strong and secure in ourselves. That's part of we, it. That's part of it. But now I get it. The other part is so that we have strong relationships. A str strong relationships. And, and when I set boundaries with people, it has always improved my relationship with that person. I've done it here more recently in the last few months, as you know, and it's totally strengthened my bond with these people. Uh, and there's one particular person I'm thinking about who I thought when I set my boundaries that she was never going to talk to me again. You thought it would hurt the relationship I to did. set a boundary. I really did. That's not physics. It will never, that no. never happens. And in fact, like, we're closer than ever. We're like, she's so su super sweet to me. And, and it's just gone way better. Yeah. Yeah. Schools, governments, parents, nobody teaches this stuff. And that's why it always seems so mind blowing. Oh my God, this is a game changer for all relationships. And I'm like, I guess it's like knowing that the gas pedal and the brake will help you drive or <laughs> knowing that one plus one equals two, and this can help you count and handle money. It's like, yeah, they're just basic physics. This is relationship physics. These things always hold up and always pan out. And if you ever find someone who, when you set a boundary, they get all mad about it and they treat you poorly and the relationship falls apart, mm -hmm. there was never a relationship to begin with. Th that's a person who doesn't understand that boundaries are the foundation of a relationship. They think people pleasing and narcissism and these kind of things are what a relationship is. They want to dissolve everybody's boundaries and they think somehow that's magically going to help things. They're straight up wrong that will never help anyone it just results in dysfunction and disorder mm -hmm. and so if you set a boundary with someone like that and they show you their true colors and they show you that they don't understand relationships and that they're looking to cross boundaries then you know you're dealing with a people pleaser or a narcissist or some other thing a sociopath or whatever yes and that there was never a relationship there to begin with if they can't respect boundaries and they don't see the value of two individuals interrelating you weren't in a relationship with them so that makes me sad because then that means I didn't have a relationship with my oldest daughter because she didn't respect any of my boundaries and we have no relationship now. Right. But it can change because you did the same thing with your middle daughter. Yes. Yes. And so you didn't have a relationship with her mm -hmm. for a while until it changed. And once boundaries started being respected again, what happened? Our relationship improved. Right. And grew. And now we're very close. Right. And I didn't have a relationship with my sister or my dad for a long time because I set boundaries and they behaved poorly. And so it's like we never really had a relationship anyways if they didn't understand the power and necessity of boundaries, right? 
Yeah. If they're just treating it dysfunctionally. And so years go by where we don't have a relationship because they didn't respect the boundary. But eventually I started relating with my sister and my dad again, Mm -hmm. and we became closer because of the boundary. Right. So it can change, but someone somewhere has to stand up for the boundary and understand it's not a real relationship until you have boundaries. If that's Mm -hmm. you, it might mean six months, a year, five years of not talking to them or whatever until they learn what you've learned. Right. Or when you set the boundary, you can explain, I'm setting a boundary because this is the only way to have a healthy relationship. I know you haven't been taught this, and I know you let other people walk all over your boundaries, but honestly, I'm doing this for us. So you can try and say that. Um, When I broke up with you, I said, this is the right thing, and you needed this, and you deserve this, and it's helpful, and it's going to help you. And it did. Yeah, yeah. Both times, actually. Yeah. And and to be clear, we're even because one time he broke up with me, and one time I broke up with him. So. It's even, I just want them because we don't really ever talk about when you broke up with me. Sure. But both times it was, it was like my hand was forced anyway. But, but this is why I also. Because the whole time I knew all of this stuff about yes, relationships. You did. I wasn't like, oh no, what's happening? I guess I have to dump her. Oh no, she's dumping me. Like, I don't know what's happening. I, I can see exactly what's happening. And the right thing to do in both times was yeah. me break up with you and then allow you to break up with me. And both times I handled it smooth as butter. Yes, you did. Because that's how it can go. I wasn't hurt in any of those times. I understand what you mean. I'm saying I handled it better than anyone else. I understand what you mean. It's not that you weren't hurt. It's that you understood the reasons why and you understood the lack of of boundaries and and the pace and direction and why the relationship was falling apart. It wasn't that you weren't hurt, but you understood. When I split up with my ex-husband and he was hurt, is because he didn't understand this. He didn't understand the check boxes. He didn't understand the boundaries, the boundary crossing and and the disrespect and why we were in it going in a different pace and direction. So this is I think the key also again we're like giving all the answers away for divorce and breakups because if you understand this it actually hurts less and because I also understood that it hurts when, almost not at all. When we broke up and I always, I said like the first three days I had a hard time. It wasn't because I didn't understand this. I knew this was the reason. My problem was I didn't know what to do with myself because I had wrapped my entire identity around what we were doing. And so I was felt lost, but that's different than I'm heartbroken because I don't understand why this relationship didn't work. And not my ex-husband, but the one before him and the other relationships I've had before that, I didn't understand understand why they didn't work and they were very painful for me uh when i when my daughter and i stopped talking same thing it was very painful for me because i did not understand this you explained it to me and i understood it better after that but it was still difficult and and it took you know more more teaching from you to really understand this boundaries and pace and direction and uh and discord so this is like a game changer if you have a broken heart right now if you're out there rise rebels and you're heartbroken over someone or something you you got fired or whatever whatever the reason is from some relationship whether it's romantic or not this is the reason why you don't understand the check boxes you don't understand the boundaries or what boundaries were crossed or disrespected and you don't understand discord but that's okay because as soon as you start to understand that that heartbreak will ease up it may not go away completely immediately but it will get better and i i can see this super clearly for anyone who's who's in pain and suffering like if you if you understand these things it makes that so much easier yep understanding cures all and partial understanding minimizes hurt So all of that was super awesome and so, 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 so helpful. Thank you. But you told me all of this that we're talking about today comes down to a game of tennis that it will help with all the relationship crap. So please explain what you meant (laughs) because it's time. Fair enough. And I wasn't avoiding it, by the way. It's just I needed to lay the groundwork because I can't explain the game of tennis unless you understand how to hold a racket and how big the court is and so on. Yeah, I know. So it was all the preliminary stuff. Okay, I know. Now, can you have a relationship with zero interactions? Like these people don't interact in any way. They don't think about each other. They don't even... No. And can you have a relationship with just a couple interactions? Like I shook their hand once at a convention and we never talked again. 
No, that's where people say, oh, it's an acquaintance because yeah. it's not any kind of relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So technically you can, technically, because we can have a relationship with anyone. We can have a parasocial relationship with an influencer we've never talked to. Mm. But in normal everyday speech, what people mean when they say relationship is what? Multiple what? Multiple interactions. Yes. So would you say that a relationship requires a series of multiple interactions, back and forth interactions? Yes. Right. And so if every relationship is a series of multiple interactions... Mm -hmm. What happens when the majority of those interactions are bad or disharmonious or discordant? Mm. Then the relationship is crap. Yeah. And what happens if the majority of those little interactions are fulfilling and high value and joyful? Mm. Then the relationship is heaven. Right. So would you say that the quality of the interactions determines the quality of the relationship since they're identical? Mm. Yeah. Bad interactions, bad relationship. Good interactions, good relationship. Yes. Okay. And so what makes a great tennis game? Is it a great tennis game if we have one interaction and I just serve and it's over? (laughs) No. Is it a great tennis game if there's some back and forth and good interactions and a good hit there and a good hit there? And yeah, I like when the, when they keep the ball in the air and they're rallying and and they're rallying and and they're, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. And to them, it's like a dance. It's like a good game. Even the world's best doesn't want to walk up onto the court and done. I win. Yeah. No, that's not fun. Right. So the quality of a relationship is determined by the quality of the interactions and the quality of a tennis game is determined by the quality of the interaction with the ball and the other player and the other player. Yeah. The ball is the check boxes. So in a relationship, you have partner A Mm -hmm. and partner B and they're interacting, but they're not interacting over nothing. Every interaction is about something. Sure. Yes. So that something is the ball. Okay. And so if you're talking about, should we sleep in or should we get right to work? The ball for that interaction Mm -hmm. is wake up times. Right. If you're interacting about, should we get divorced? The ball at that point is about commitment or loyalty or money or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got you. If you're interacting over vegan diet or carnivore diet, then the ball is house nutrition, household nutrition. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm sorry. I got you. Right. I got you. Right. (laughs) And if you want a good relationship, what do you have to do with every interaction with on every topic with every ball? Well, the check boxes thing, they have to like, you have to be on the same pace and direction. You have to, you have to have the same check box, the same boxes checked and you have to like be on the same page about it. Right. So that ball needs to have the same pace and direction. Right. Now, in tennis, there are singles and doubles. Mm -hmm. If you're playing singles, you're playing against the other player and trying to beat them. Yes. So if you're in a relationship and you're like, I want a divorce and I don't want a divorce and I want a divorce and I don't want a divorce. Are these friendly interactions? No, they're not. Right. And what happens with the ball? Does it go the same pace and direction or are they hitting it in opposite pace and direction each time? No, they're hitting it in different pace and direction because they both have their feelings involved now. And and completely opposite. And completely opposite. One's uh, hitting it north towards that wall and the other one's hitting it south away from that wall. Yes. So they're going a different direction. Yes. Right. But if you want a good relationship, what if you're playing doubles and you're both on the same team and there's like an empty spot on the court? Now you both want to hit it (laughs) to that empty spot on the court. You both hit the ball the same pace and direction on the same trajectory. Right. You're cooperating. Yes. Right. And when you do this, you're both in agreement on the topic. You're both in harmony on the topic about this checkbox, whatever the interaction is. Right. And it's going to feel amazing. Right. (laughs) It feels easy. Right. But if your partner suddenly runs away to the other side and turns your doubles match into a singles and they're playing against you. Yeah, it doesn't feel great. Every interaction is going to feel horrible. Right. And so here's our relationship, a series of interactions about various topics. And if we want a good relationship, we need to figure a way to be on the same pace and direction as our partner. And sometimes it's going to be your turn to set a boundary and stand for a deal breaker and let your partner adjust their pace and direction because honey this is my deal breaker you're going to have right. to change yes and other times it's going to be your turn to change the pace and direction and get on their level like you said about camping 
like, oh, sin, I'm really not big on camping, but this is important to you and I care about the relationship. So I'm going to change. I'm going to give it a shot and I'm going to have fun with it and I'm going to do the best I can. And who knows, maybe I'll end up liking it. And now when I start liking camping and I've become familiar with it, I've brought harmony to our pace and direction and our trajectory on that interaction, on that ball. And that discussion, that interaction is going to feel good and you're going to feel good about me as a partner. Yeah. Right. And we have a whole episode about communication yes, and how to communicate well and how there's energy and attention and value behind everything you communicate. But even if you're not the best at communication, just understanding the tennis analogy, understanding relationship tennis can be a game changer. Mm -hmm. If you are able to see what box is being discussed, right? You can see the ball. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to see what pace and direction your partner's trying to hit this ball, and if you're able to harmonize with that and follow a similar pace and direction on that topic, you're going to get closer to your partner. And if you also know when to stand your ground and set a boundary and let them change their pace and direction, then that's going to make your relationship life easy too, because you know what you're doing. You understand the situation and you know when to set a boundary. And you also know that if they separate or they don't like it, that they're not a right fit because you have a very important checkbox not being met, a deal breaker that's not being met. And there's someone else on the planet of 8 billion people who's going to fulfill that checkbox. And if this person is not willing to change on that one, you're probably not the right fit for each other. If atheism is really important to me and my Christian partner refuses to change, we're probably not a good fit. That's okay. Yeah. And so part of relationship tennis involves being cold. Like being cold is talked about as some terrible thing, but heat's supposed to exist in the world and cold is supposed to exist in the world. True, true. Sunshine's supposed to exist and rain is supposed to exist. Mm -hmm. And every human should at some time in their life take a firm, cold stand for a boundary. Otherwise, they're a people pleaser who has no boundaries and is never cold to anyone and literally dissolves their personality and everyone runs roughshod over them. Agreed. So a little bit of coldness is vital for everyone in every relationship. Yeah. And when you, when you're a people pleaser, we have an episode on that too. Yeah, we do. And, and if you're a people pleaser and you're not used to setting boundaries and speaking your truth and what you need and want, it feels not just cold. It feels painful. It feels like you're, you're upsetting that person and it feels like you're the end of the world. But the only reason it feels like that is because you're one, you're not used to doing it. Two, you're too worried about what they're going to think. And what you really need to be worried about is how you feel and what you want. And I know that also may sound cold, but it's not. It's because you can't pour from an empty cup. This saying is 100% true. So if you're giving and giving and giving and giving and you are empty, you, this is why we have anxiety and depression and just feeling really shitty about ourselves and not good enough and blah, 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 all those negative feelings. They come to us because this is one of the main reasons we're not setting boundaries and we're not, we feel bad when we do. So we might set something small with someone, but, oh, but, well, and we'll say, if that's okay with you, is that okay? And it's, 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 it's like, am I allowed to have a boundary? Yeah. And that's basically what we're asking when we say it. But what, what we really mean is, please don't be mad at me because I said, this is what I want. Please don't hate me because I set a boundary. But, but that doesn't matter. We have to practice this. Yeah, you're making an excellent point. And uh, you said you can't pour from an empty cup. My question is, can you even fill up a cup if it has no boundaries? Oh, that's so good. No, you can't. So how are you going to be fulfilled? No, you're you're just dropping water everywhere. How are you going to be fulfilled yeah. if you have no boundaries? You cannot. How are you going to overflow joy to others if you have no boundaries? You can't. Exactly. Super important. So there you go. Now you understand relationship tennis and the series of interactions. Yes. All because we explained check boxes and trajectory and discord and harmony and boundary setting and personal change. Yeah. Because those are like the forehand and the backhand and the volley and the lob in relationship tennis. Those are the different ways to hit it, right? Yes. So you can't have a good game of tennis without them. That's true. That's very true. And can you see how anyone who applies the things we've taught here would be a relationship master? If they practiced yes. it and applied it, they would navigate relationships with ease. Easy. And there's a phrase that people say, which is the ball is in your court. Oh, yeah, that's true. The ball is in your court. And this is super important to know because a relationship takes two or more. And when you hit the ball to someone else's court, like you say, I want to become a vegan. 
and that person like walks away or goes to think about it or something, it's very tempting to go and pick up the ball for them. Like, let me go talk to them about it again. Let me raise the issue again. Yes. Let me see if I can convince them to be be vegan with me. It's like, no, 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 no. This is not how you play tennis. The ball is in their court. You've done your job. Mm -hmm. You've done your part. A relationship takes two and you've hit the ball. You've talked about the interaction. You've brought up the topic. You did the gutsy thing and said, I want to make this life change. The ball is now in their court. And later on, you can gently like prod them if you want. Like, hey, did you give any thought to it or whatever? But the ball is in their court. They have to take it and run with it. They have to hit it back and say something and engage you on it. Yeah. If you tell them to take out the trash, the ball is in their court. They either take it out or don't, but they're going to, yes. they're going to set the tone of the relationship. It's now in their court. And so people have trouble trusting their partner. They won't, don't want to let go of control of the conversation, but it's like, well, what if they don't call me back? What if they don't never take out the trash? What if they don't become vegan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then they don't. You have to let that person play their part or play their role. Let them hit the ball back. If you go and take that over, you're not in a relationship. You're running around like a people pleaser, playing their part. You're like picking up the ball for them and doing all the work and you will feel resentful. You will feel like I'm doing all the work in this relationship because you are, because they're not making an effort. And this is why when I tell someone you've crossed a boundary, I'm not out there chasing them down. I'm not talking to them again for like years if they're not going to like pick up the ball. Right. So I said my piece, you crossed a boundary. If you want to relate to me again, it's in your court. The ball is in your court. You've got to pick it up just like you and your daughter. If you said sorry and you apologize for your part, the ball is in her court. It is her responsibility and people can't stand this. They hate it. They can't. Most people can't handle it or live with it. They can't just let it be. They don't have the discipline. They want to force the relationship and make the other person play ball. But a good relationship is where each person is passionately and lovingly hitting the ball back and forth with joy, not you chasing them down and playing their part for them and forcing them to do it and making them commit to the relationship and whatever. That's bullshit. That's not a relationship. That's a joke. And so understanding all this to me makes it pretty much impossible to get hurt in any relationship. And if you do get hurt, it's like a paper cut. It's like minimal. Like, oh, that stings, but it makes sense. I get it. Yeah, it's not impossible, but it definitely, it takes the horrific feeling of wanting to die away by understanding all this stuff. So this is a wonderful and amazing. And if you got tons of value out of that, like everything he just said is amazing. I'm sorry, but that was just next level. Yeah, it should be, behind, this should be behind like a $100,000 paywall. Yeah. Like I know there are celebrity couples. <laughs> I know there are celebrity couples that would pay a hundred grand for this level of relationship coaching of course and i know this puts other relationship coaches to shame and i know we just gave it away free and when you give stuff away free people don't value it but the value is there man like Mm -hmm. you can you can hate on it or disagree or whatever but you just got a ferrari or a lamborghini of relationship coaching for free yeah and so if you have a specific question or a specific problem your specific situation thing that you want to talk to jay about like let's talk about it because he can help you and i think this episode especially i mean they all do but this one especially proves that he really knows what he's talking about and this is amazing this is helpful for me and i've learned on this podcast so i know you have too so if you have any questions that you want to ask us or you have an idea for a video for us or whatever communicate with us like come on rise rebels talk about it in in the comments let's help those quiet girls or boys that are lurking and who are afraid to say anything we love you guys too we really want to help you and if you want to talk to jay one-on-one say so in the comments or shoot me an email and i'll set it up yay thank you so much for your time i really appreciate you you are amazing you helped me today i know you helped our audience you're wonderful so i have one more oh thank you i have one more question do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with our amazing audience Yes. A lot of people don't like to hear this, but relationships are laughably easy and laughably simple. The only reason they seem complicated is because you've been taught a million bad habits about them from a million different people who suck at relationships. No offense. And I have a vision of a world where everyone is relating on such a higher level, where people are consciously navigating relationships and getting their needs met, and they're adjusting their pace and direction to one another, and they're creating harmony constantly and often, and they can tell when there's discord and they know how to correct for it, and they know when a relationship's lifespan has ended and it's time to separate, and they know when to set a boundary and how, and they're diplomatic and tactful about it. I have a vision for a beautiful world and a culture of people who are so 
natural at relationships. And it starts here with you today. I care about you and I want you to have beautiful, blessed relationships. And I've given you the tools and the teachings to do it. All that's left is for you to practice it and become good at it. And when you do, oh, it's going to feel so good. You'll never have a relationship trouble or struggle. When you have friends that have them, you'll know how to solve them. People will come to you for advice in all the relationship arenas. I'm telling you, man, you have a paradise lined up for you. Your life can be so much easier. Relationships can be so much easier. And it's all here for you. You're on your way. I'm so psyched to see what you do with it. Yay. And that's why our podcast and our book (laughs) are called Eyes Wide Open. And so after today, you will never be hurt in your relationships again if you apply the things. But some of these only work if you are good at investing in people and you understand investing in people. So this video right here, right here, (laughs) will help you with that and learning how to invest in others so you can keep your eyes wide open. Keep rising.